Hey guys, it's Miss Black with another art tutorial. Today's lesson is going to be about art for art's sake and art skills. So we're not technically integrating any sort of core subject from your regular classroom. But what we're doing is just learning about school skills on how to be a good artist. And this skill is going to be cross-hatching. So you're going to be learning about how to create a value scale with just line and how to use that to shade other things and make it look 3D. So this is kind of what we're going to be making today. Um, this is just a good thing to have. So if you have two pieces of paper, this is a really good reference thing for this. Or if you don't have two pieces of paper, you can put your value scales on the same page as your shapes. I just think it might look good to have two separate pieces of paper so that you have one that's for the value scales like this and then one for your shapes. But if you just have one piece of paper, you can do it all on the same thing like this. That's up to you. Okay, so we're going to start with our value scales. So what I need you guys to do first is First of all, you're going to need a piece of paper, and second of all, you're going to need a pen. And this is only, we're only going to be using pen, we're not using pencil. So, and the reason for that is because we want to learn how to crosshatch, and we don't want to be able to erase it because it's a good practice. It makes you have to just make a mark and commit to that mark that you've made. So I'm going to ask that you use a pen. Ballpoint pens are really fun to actually draw with. And it's something that I've actually been teaching for a little while. So go ahead and see if you can find a ballpoint pen. If the only thing you have is a pencil, though, that's okay. Use your pencil. But remember, you can't erase. You have to just make your marks. So the first thing I'm going to have you guys do is you're going to take your pen and you're going to draw a long rectangle. Let me say about that size. And you're going to do this four times. And leave like a gap in between so you know it's a different one. And if you guys would like to, you can draw them all on the same level here, or you can draw them in the same column. So I drew them all in the same column here. But if you want to do two here and two here, you can do that. I'm just going to do the same column. So you're going to draw four long rectangles. And this is a great project for older artists because it is a little bit intricate. But if our, there are those of you in the younger grades that would like to challenge yourself and try this, then you are always welcome to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do with these rectangles is we're going to divide both of them into half. So we're going to put a line in the middle of each of our rectangles. Okay, and then we're going to divide those halves in half, so we're going to divide it into fourths now. So I'm going to go over to this half, and I'm going to put a line in the middle of that half on each of my rectangles. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to put a line in the middle, dividing those in half. Okay, and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to do that one more time. You're going to divide all of those into halves. So you're going to put a line in the middle of each square shape, and then we'll call it good there. So you should have eight squares, or eight little rectangles. I guess these are more rectangles than squares. In each long rectangle. Okay, so if we count these, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we're going to label these. It's going to show the value. So like the, bit, the darkest value in here would be a seven. The lightest value, of course, is a zero because it doesn't have anything. So we're going to label these seven through zero. So seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And we're going to do that on all of them. Seven, six, five, 
And it's a really good idea to label these because I'm going to be referring to different values by their number. So I'll say, oh, if it's light, it's going to be a 1 or a 0. If it's dark, it's going to be a 6 or a 7, right? At least according to these ones. Okay. So the reason why we're doing 4 is because I want to show you how you can make things dark using a certain amount of lines. So for this one, this is only going to be using one type of line. This one is going to be using two in each square. This one is going to be using three. This one's going to be using four. So we're going to label each square by w the way we're going to shade it. So for this one, it's just going to be a line. So put a line next to it. This one is going to be a line with a diagonal line as well. This one is going to be a line with a diagonal line and another diagonal line going the other way. And then this one is going to be four lines with one going that way, one going diagonal that way, one going diagonal that way, and one going horizontal that way. Okay? So it kind of looks like a snowflake. That's what it's supposed to look like. So over here we're going to start with the one line. Okay? So we know this one does not have any sort of pen marks in it. This is going to be the darkest that you make it. And the way you're going to do this is you're going to just take your one lines, one type of lines, and you're just going to draw them very close together. And some of these, maybe I could add lines in between. But it's going to look quite dark just because these lines are close together. And then as you get on to the lighter ones, your lines are going to slowly move farther apart. You might also make it lighter by not pushing as hard on your pen. Okay, so this one is lighter than this one. And then the next one, we're going to go to five. It's going to be farther apart, so lighter. And then so on until you get to nothing. So I'm going to do that here farther apart, maybe even less pressure on my pen. So I'm not pushing as hard on my pen to make the mark lighter. And then farther apart, maybe even lighter. Farther apart still. And then one would be just very few lines and very light. Okay, So it's dark to light. And we're going to do this on all of them. Um, and actually, all of them, you can do this type of thing to all of them because all of them are going to have the vertical lines. So I would suggest actually doing that in all of them, making this same thing in all of them, and then we'll add to these as we go along. So I'm going to make these lines all the same. Only vertical lines. Okay, so up and down in all number sevens. Okay, and then you'll make them get lighter and lighter like we've already done. Okay, so we can kind of see how that's going from dark to light. And this is really good practice. All artists have some experience with making value scales and it's a really good exercise so that they can understand so that we can understand because I should say we we are all artists so that we can understand the medium we're using and the medium being the pen that we're using in this case I think I've mentioned this before but medium can be anything it could be anything that you use to create something 
So if you're using a pencil instead of a pen today, your medium is a pencil. Okay. So we'll go to this one now. And in addition to these vertical lines, we are going to now make horizontal lines going to the right. So I'm going to make this even darker by adding some vertical, or sorry, not vertical, but diagonal lines that lean to the right. And I'm not going to add any other lines to this value scale because that's all that we're doing on this one. So then you're going to think of it the same way, so whatever you overlap onto this value scale, you're going to think about it getting farther and farther apart so it stays, it gets lighter as well. So in the seven, in the seven square, I'm going to make this um, cl quite close together, my horizontal lines. And then in the six, they're not going to be as close together. And this is called cross hatching. And then farther apart in the five. Farther apart in the four. And so on. In the three farther apart. Two. One. Okay, so maybe you guys would benefit from getting a zoom in version of this. Yeah, that's probably better. Okay, so then in this one, you're going to do this same thing in all three of them because all, I mean, the rest of these have that line and the diagonal line. So we're going to add this to all three of them. So if you missed, um, if you didn't understand, I will explain it again in this next one. So. I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to do some diagonal lines that are really close together because this is seven, this is the darkest one. But I'm not going to do it as dark in six because it's getting lighter. Okay, and so maybe I can even add some lines. I don't know if you guys can see this. Maybe I can zoom in a tiny bit. Sorry if this makes a loud noise. Focus. Let's focus. There we go. Okay. So I'll show you guys a little bit closer up. I can make this a little darker. But remember, in this one, we're only doing two types of line, which is vertical and diagonal going to the right. In this one, we're going to do more than that. But we're going to um, add this to each of them because each of these have that vertical line and diagonal line. Okay. So to explain this one again, I'm only doing these vertical or these horizontal, excuse me, these diagonal lines, um, but the, in the seven they're closer together, in the six they're getting farther apart, in the five even farther, and so on until you get to your one, which would be the farthest. And zero has nothing in it. Okay, so we're gonna do that in all of them and you can see how it's starting to look like what's called a gradient, which is um, a slow change in value on any certain object or maybe even if you look at the sky, you can see what, what's called a gradient, but it's like a colorful gradient. This is a black and white gradient. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. If you missed it, you can watch it one more time. Only doing a diagonal line leaning to the right. Actually set it right this time. Diagonal. Okay, so that's pretty dark. Six is going to be not as close together. Five, four, spreading apart, three, two, one. And also, like I said at the beginning, you can 
release pressure on your pen to even also make it a little bit lighter. So just as an example, I'll show you on the back. This is like a dark line. Oh, sorry. And this is um, me not putting as much pressure on it, and it's lighter. So a lot of pressure, not a lot of pressure. Okay. So we're done with this one. We've just done the vertical and the horizontal. Sorry, I did it again. The vertical and the diagonal line. For this one, we're going to do the other way going diagonal. So I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to do the same thing really close together in the seven because it's the darkest. And I feel like I could even add more diagonal lines in here. Okay, and then in six, it's not as close together. In five, it gets farther apart. So on. Less pressure. Okay, and you're going to do the same thing in this one because this one has the same lines as this one has. So diagonal lines going toward the left this time. Close together. So I don't know if you've um, already deduced this, but in this one it's going to be your darkest value scale. Because it's going to have four lines. Farther apart, less pressure. Finally, the lightest you'll get. Okay, and so now this one, you're going to add one more line, and it is the line going horizontal, so left to right. And you're going to put them really close together in seven. Six farther apart. Five. Four. Three. Less pressure. Two. One. Okay. So if you look at this from farther away, excuse me if this makes noise. My camera also has a mic in it, so it might be, might be messing with the noise, the sound. If you look at it from far away, it kind of looks like a gradient, not only from left to right, but from corner to corner. And that's what um, cross-hatching is. So what we're going to use today for this, we're going to do for use with this, is we're going to try and draw shapes and make them shaded uh, according to a light source, so this is my light source right here. And we're going to shade these and make them look 3D. So the shapes that we're going to draw is a cube. And I'm just drawing these on one page, but you guys can use two pages if you want. So yes, I should actually explain the light source thing. So I'm just going to put a little line right here and make it into like a little sun. And this is going to be my light source. So I'm going to label this light source. L-I-G-H-T-S-O-U-R-C-E. A light source doesn't have to be the sun. It can be any light source in your house. A uh, flashlight could be considered a light source, lamp, anything like that. But I'm just drawing this as a symbol because the sun is the biggest light source that we have. So that's my light source. And we're going to draw some shapes now. So we're going to draw a cube. We're going to start this off with a square. And like I said, you could do this on a separate sheet of paper if you would like. So we're going to draw a square. We're going to draw a triangular prism, so we're going to draw a triangle. Okay. 
help you guys see that better. Okay, so a triangle, we're gonna draw a sphere. So we're gonna draw a circle. And your, your shapes don't have to be perfect, it's fine. We're gonna draw a cylinder, so the thing that you're gonna wanna draw for this is an oval. Or another way of calling, another word for this is also an ellipse. Um, we're going to draw a triangular pyramid. So you're going to draw a, um, almost like a romp, like a rhombus, like a diamond. This, except the bottom of your diamond is going to be flatter. And then you're going to draw a rectangular prism. So it's kind of like a cube, but a rectangular cube almost. So you're going to draw a rectangle. And I'll show you how to make all of these 3D in just a minute. And you're going to draw a cone. So wherever else you have room. I have room right here, so I'm going to draw a cone. So I'm going to start with the top of a triangle but not a line on the bottom. The line is actually going to be like a smiley line or a curved line. So I'm going to draw this at the bottom and this will be a cone. Okay. So we've already made this into 3D, um, the shape anyway. We haven't shaded it to make it look 3D. Let's make our square 3D. So you're going to choose um, one, of these corner, one of these top corners to do this. I'm going to do it on the right side. And I'm just going to draw a diagonal line. And I'm going to draw one on this corner. And I'm going to draw one on this corner. I'm not going to draw one on here because this is going to be technically an opaque shape. You can't see through it. So you're not going to draw a line here because you can't see through the cube. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect these lines with a straight line. And there's a cube, okay? Our triangular prism is gonna be the same sort of idea. You're gonna choose a side to draw your, um, your plane, planar change. So the, how up, you know, your plane of your cube right here changes to another plane right here. So I'm going to draw it on the right side on this one as well, why not? So you're going to draw a uh, diagonal line on one of the corners. It could be, could be um, you could decide the left or the right. I'm going to do the right again. And you're going to connect that like we did the cube. Okay, so those triangular prism. Um, the only way that we can make a circle look 3D is by shading it. So we're going to leave that. Uh, as far as the cylinder goes, we started with this oval or this ellipse. So what you're going to do now is you're going to draw straight lines going down. And then we're going to finish this off with another type curvy smiley line because it's a curved shape. Okay, so there's your cylinder. Triangular pyramid, all you have to do with this rhombus is connect the corner here to the top. And then for this one, just like the cube, you're going to choose a corner to start this off on and then you're going to connect it like the cube okay so our goal today is to shade these and I'm going to be referring to different numbers so that's why we have the value scale handy so if you're doing this on a separate sheet of paper go ahead and have that handy so you can refer to it um, let's start with the cube so this is the light source here. The light is shining here. So this would be probably one of the lighter values. So I'm going to make this maybe like a one, maybe just like a one that is this, for this top, the lightest value scale. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just draw very lightly just some vertical lines. Okay, right here it's still pretty light, but it's probably not as light as this is because the light is directly hitting it right here, but not maybe not as directly as, as it is here. So I might do this, but maybe add a diagonal line to it. So I'll do this, maybe the same thing. Okay. 
but I'm going to add a diagonal line to it. And you're cross hatching to make this look 3D. So you're shading with lines. Okay. And this one is probably. Hey, oh, excuse me. Thank you guys. I'd like some burritos. Excuse me, there was an announcement. I'm at school. So this one's going to be the darkest one, so the light is hitting it here. I might choose um, maybe one of the darker ones or maybe like uh, this, this side of the value scale. So you could decide, hey, I, w I just want to stick to the one lines, or you could just choose one of these because you know that they get darker. You just kind of want to choose what you would see in real life. And I feel like this one might be like a 5 or a 6 in this line with a diagonal line. So I'm going to draw these quite close together. And I'm going to add maybe even closer. And I'm going to add a diagonal line to it to make it even darker. Because when you overlap, as you've seen by making your value scales, when you overlap, it makes it look darker. So I'm going to add this right here. Cross-hatching is really fun to work with with pen. Another way that they used it historically in art is through printmaking. So they'd take a plate and they'd actually have a blade and instead of drawing these, they'd be cutting these. And then when you print it, the, lot, the ink sinks into the cut and you can print it, put it in a press and print it. So this looks 3D now because we've added these different values. Okay, one other thing I want to show you before I let you guys just go ahead and do these, and I will do these actually on a time lapse so you can see me doing it, but I don't want to take your time. We've already reached almost a half hour for this lesson, but I do want to show you how to do a curved type um, object. So these ones uh, are the curved ones. Um, I will show you guys the sphere, and then I will let you guys go on with the rest of these on your own, but I'll show you the sphere. So the light source is here. So right here, that's going to be my lightest light, or another word for that is highlight. So I'm going to make this either a one, sorry, a one or a zero. Um, and the way that you're going to want to think of this, is you have a circle, okay, and you have your light source. you're not going to draw straight lines for this value scale. It might look okay, but it's not going to look realistic if you do that. So if I made this a one, and then I made this darker, this is just going to look like a plate, like a flat circle. We want it to look like a 3D circle. So instead of straight lines, you're going to do curved lines. Kind of like the moon phases. And then they'll curve, so they're, they're here going toward the, the right side of it, they curve this way, but then that curve sort of flattens out, and then it starts to curve the other way. And that's how you turn it into, uh, make it look like a 3D object. So the way that you are going to be shading these, you're putting this, these marks down, is not um, in, a, in a flat way, but you're gonna curve it. So for this one, let's do it again right here because that's, that's kind of what not to do. You're not going to do the straight lines. Don't do that. I'll do another one here. And I'll just say this is my light source again, right here. So my lightest light is going to be here. I'm going to do like a one right there. But I'm going to do this in a, like following the form of it. This is my lightest light. And then the next one, I'd maybe move to a two. And the coolest thing about round objects like this 
is you're going to do basically a gradient like you did like you did on here you're going to see the entire value scale on a curved object you're not going to say oh well that's like a two that's a four you're going to see seven through zero in your curved object so my lightest light i would leave blank and then i would So actually, I'll show you on this one. My light source is here. So my lightest light is going to be hitting right about here because that's where the light is coming from. And I'm going to, maybe I'll even do the whole thing, a one in straight lines, except for that lightest light, which is um, a zero. So I'm gonna leave this edge maybe just like a zero with no um, value and then I'm going to make it look like this and you could decide hey I just want to stick to the one line but if you want to do all the way to seven you can you can do some darker values there so that's up to you I'm gonna stick with the one line until I get to adding more value um, so right here this is my lightest light I'm going to now maybe even start from here and add more lines closer together following that same form hope I didn't get the, the bottom okay and then I'm going to add maybe even more so I've already done like a one and a two now I'm going to go to a three on the next level didn't get the bottom again whoops then I'm gonna go to a four so closer together more pressure then a five and the there's a reason why I'm kind of leaving this a, a little bit lighter there's something called reflected light where you have an object and it's sitting on something and light is hitting it and you might think hey this is the darkest dark like on the other side of it but technically the light is hitting whatever it's sitting on and it's reflecting back to it so you're gonna see a lighter um, value here near the edge of the table or whatever it's sitting on and then your darkest dark will be more um, in the middle so your darkest value so I'm going to add my darkest dark about right here probably and if you want to add more lines to that different for, um, different lines you can add, make that even darker so I'm going to maybe add some diagonal lines to this and I'm following that same form maybe I should zoom in sorry if this makes noise So I'm going to um, add more. I'm following the form because this is a round object. So I'm not going to just make it look flat. Okay, and I feel like I want to make that even darker. So I might add a line going the opposite way. And it will make it darker. Okay, so now I've made this looks more like an egg now, but that's okay, because I didn't do a perfect circle. So now I have my, my um, circle shaded, and now it looks like a sphere. It looks like a 3D object. Okay, uh, so I'm going to put the rest to you guys. We're already at 35 minutes, so I'm going to cut it there. But I hope you guys have fun and you practice this, because it's a really good skill to have as an artist is understanding cross-hatching but more especially value scales and please send me your work i'd love to post it thanks guys